Right, so hopefully you've done the homework, but if you haven't, then I'll, I'll get through it now for you. So what we were seeing here uh, was how to define a uh, co-algebra structure on a tensor product of two co-algebras. So I should show you how to do that string diagrammatically first. So I'll uh, I do this with two. Uh, I'll try and do this with two colours. So we had H. We, we start with H and uh, and well, no, H is red, isn't it? So we start with H in red and K in white. And the idea is we want to go from red white to red white red white. So how do we do that? Red white red white. So what, what we do, of course, is the only thing we can do, because we've got a co-algebra, is, is double the red, double the white. And the fact we're in a braided monoidal category, we can, we, can, uh, we can go from the red, white to white, red. So we can pass the red over the white. So, so this is the this is then the co-product on here. So here we're using this is the braiding. So that's the braiding, and the braiding. A braiding in a in a monoidal category is a natural transformation uh, tor A B from B tensor A to A tensor B, uh, which is sort of natural in some suitable sense. So just a symmetry. Just for instance. Um, in the category of vector spaces, you've got this isomorphism between B tensor W and W tensor V, which is just got by uh, going from V tensor W, you just got a vector V and a vector W, and you just switch the order around. Okay. So that's just a, a simple one. But they can be more complicated. So this sort of generalizes the idea of just a symmetry in a category. Anyway, so the point was, what was the point? So where on earth was I? So, if we think back, we were needing to show that these are co-algebra maps. So mu and eta had to be co-algebra maps. So if we do delta on that, uh, and then do mu, or we do mu on that and then delta, sorry, the other way around, delta on that, uh, delta on that, then mu, or mu on that and then delta, we should get the, the same thing. So so I can now write this down. We had that we needed to show that, uh, well, we needed to state the condition that mu is a co-algebra map. So if I do delta and then mu, it's the same as doing mu and delta, essentially. So if I just uh, write that down, so we're saying that uh, delta uh, composed with uh, mu is mu tends to mu composed with delta. So I, uh, what I really want to do is just write that down in terms of string diagrams. So if I do mu and then I do delta, that has to be equal to doing delta, oh, let's see, I got it all around again, didn't I? So that should be delta, well, that's delta on H. So what was delta on H? Sorry, delta on H tensor H. Oh, I'm in a good one, am I? Right, so delta on H tensor H, as we saw, was we do the, H, the delta of the individual things and then we use the braiding. So that was uh, delta on H tends H, and then we just do two copies of the product. So, so we have this little diagram, which I can then neaten up a bit, because you can't see it very well. Press very, very hard this time. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Very, very. Looks like I'm destined not to draw that one very well. Okay, so that was mu being compatible with delta, but of course it also has to be compatible with epsilon, but that just says that uh, if we do 
epsilon, uh, mu followed by epsilon is the same as doing epsilon. So we can write that mu followed by epsilon is just equal to doing epsilon uh, first on h tends to h. Now, I didn't tell you what epsilon on h tends to h was, it was just epsilon tends to epsilon. So we have that one. So that's the, the, these two axioms are expressing the fact that mu is now a co-algebra map, and we can express the fact that eta is also a co-algebra map, so that gives us another two axioms, which we can write down quite simply, as well as that one turned upside down. Uh, that's true. So if we go from nothing by epsilon, and then do the Q product, then that's just the same as doing two copies of epsilon. Um, and sorry, not epsilon, that's eta, of course, isn't it? Right, OK, and plus one other, which I'll just use as a little exercise to find the other axiom, which is saying the compatibility uh, that eta behaves well with, with respect to the co unit. So I'll, li I'll leave you to think about that. And then the last thing then, uh, oh, so before I do this, there seems to be some uh, some asymmetry here. So it looks like this co-algebra structure is sort of more primeval than the algebra structure. Now we saw that was the case in Cartesian closed in a Cartesian monoidal category, um, which is why I wrote it like this. In fact, I could have written it the other way around, quite happily, that we had an algebra together with a compatible co-algebra structure. So in fact, if you write down the fact that these are algebra maps, then bingo, you get exactly the same thing down. So if, uh, although I wrote it down asymmetrically, in fact, it is symmetric. Uh, so you can find that other axiom there. And then all I need to do is express the antipode, uh, which was the axiom, the remaining axiom we have to find, which was as follows. Um, remember, you take G, you double it, you take an element G, you double it, you apply the antipode to the inverse to one side, and then you multiply them together, and you should get the, uh, the unit back. So that's uh, quite easy to write down. So we do delta, uh, and then we just apply the inverse to one side. So I'll write it like that, and then I multiply these two together and I get some element, and that element is supposed to be uh, the unit element, but how do I get that? Well, remember, that was supposed to be saying that if I do, if I do epsilon, and then I do eta, so I do the co-unit, then the unit, this picks out the unit in, in the group for me, um, and so it says that that has to equal that. So that is the, uh, that's the, this is the antipode axiom, well, of course, there's two versions of it. Remember, g, g inverse is equal to the identity, but also g inverse g is also the identity. So we have another version where I get rid of that, and I write it on the other side, so it's two versions. And so that, therefore, is the list of axioms for the whole thing. Thank you.